Chapter 1, Section 5. Today we're solving equations with variables on both sides. What do I mean on both sides? Both sides of the equal sign. Yes. So, I'm going to have a variable on the left side of my equal sign and on the right side, both sides of the equation. So here's a few steps. Here's a few steps we follow whenever we're solving equations with variables on both sides. So first step, simplify one or both sides of the equation if necessary. What I mean by that is if there's parentheses, I want to use my distributive property to get rid of those sets of parentheses, and I also want to see if I can combine any like terms. Get it down to where I can't simplify it any further. Does that make sense? Yes. Next step. Use inverse operations to collect the variable terms on one side. Then collect the constant terms on the other side and isolate the variable. So what is it, which of those does it list first, variable or constant? Variable. I want, to con I want to isolate or collect my variable terms on one side first. After I do my variables, then I want to do my constants and get them on the opposite side. And then I can isolate my variable, a.k.a. solve my var for my variable. Are there any questions about any of those steps? Simplify. Collect variables on one side. Um, collect the constants on the other side. Solve for the variable. Are you writing this down or can I move on? I'm still writing. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time. Uh, you can if you want. These are your notes. It is in your book. Do what? Found it. Let's look at some examples. Solve each equation, check your solution. 10 minus 4x equals negative 9x. 10 minus 4x equals negative 9x. So based on my previous slide, what does it say my first step is? Simplify one or both sides. Simplify one or both sides if necessary. So let's look at the left side of my equation. 10 minus 4x. Are there any parentheses that I can use distributive property on? No. Nope. Do I have any like terms that I can combine? No. Nope. So is it already simplified? Yeah. Yep. So look at the right-hand side. Is that one already simplified? Yep. It's just negative 9x. So do I even need to do step one here? No. Nope. Step two. What's my next step? Very good. We're going to use our inverse operations. We're going to deal with our variables first. So how do I get my variables to one side? How do I collect them to one side? Add or subtract. Or I could maybe in the future multiply or divide, right? But what am I going to do in this case? Add what to both sides? 4x, 4x to both sides. Cancels out over here. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. What am I left with on the left-hand side? Left-hand side. 10. Negative 9x plus 4x. Negative 5x. Okay, so I collected my variables to one side. What's, what do I do after I collect my variables to one side? Collect the constant terms on the other side. Did I already do that? Yeah, I don't have any other constants with my variables, so I don't have to do that step anymore. And my last step, isolate the variable. Get the variable by itself. How do I solve for x here? Divide by? Negative 5 on both sides. x equals negative 2. Questions on number 1.
Does everyone see how we work through those steps? Simplify both sides, collect the variables to one side, collect the constants to the other, isolate the variable. Am I done with number one? What does it tell me to do? Check my solution. So I'm plugging negative two into my original problem. Anytime I see an x. And now I'm just using order of operations to work down both sides of my equation. So left side, 10 minus 4 times negative 2. Based on my order of operations, what do I need to do first? Multiply what times what? Negative 4 times negative 2. Negative 4 times negative 2, which gives me? Positive 8. Positive 8. Right hand side, negative 9 times negative 2. Positive 18. And then left hand side, 10 plus 8? 18. True or false statement? True. True. I know my answer of negative 2 checks out. It's the right answer. Any questions on number 1? We good? 2. Okay, someone raise your hand. Give me my first step on number two. Subtract three x from both sides. We didn't have any simplifying to do, did we? So we're collecting the variables to one side now. Negative two x minus three x. Negative five x. What am I left with on the right hand side? Ten. Do I need to do any more collecting of constants on the other side? No, because they're already there. How do I get x by itself? Divide by negative 5. x equals? Negative 2. Question how I got x equals negative 2. We all right? Plugging in. Am I moving too fast for anyone? I feel like I'm flying through this. So negative 2 times negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 plus 10. Negative 2 times negative 2. Positive 4. 3 times negative 2. Negative 6. Negative 6 plus 10. Positive 4. True or false statement? True. Okay, I'll slow down. Are there any questions on what I've done, how I got my answer, how I checked my solution? Any confusion I need to clear up at all? Can I move on? Solve each equation. Does it tell me to check my solution? No, so I don't have to. If it tells you to check your solution, check it. If it doesn't tell you to, then you don't have to check it. You can if you want, though. Number one, we have 3 times 3x three minus 4 equals 1 fourth times 32x plus 56. Raise your hand if you can give me my first step. Distribute. I have some simplifying I can do on both sides now. Remember, our first step is to simplify both sides if necessary. So what's 3 times 3x? Uh, nine, no. 9x. Nine 9x. Nine 3 times negative 4? Negative 12. Questions on the left-hand side? Can I simplify the right-hand side any? What do I need to do? Distribute 1 fourth times 32x. 8x. 8x. 1 fourth times 56. Huh? 1 fourth times 56. What is it? 14. 14. Very good. Do I have any other simplifying I can do now? Nope, both sides are simplified as far as I can go. 
Next step. Subtract 8x from both sides. Why didn't you subtract 9x from both sides? Does it matter which one I do? What were you going to say? You can move either one you want. I would have probably moved 8x also. If I subtract 9x from both sides, what's 8x minus 9x? Negative 1x. I'd get a negative number. You guys don't like dealing with negatives, do you? What happens if I subtract 8x from both sides? What's 9x minus 8x? Positive 1x, right? So I would have done the same thing. That way I can deal with a positive number instead of a negative number. But either way, we'll give you the same answer. What did we say 9x minus 8x was? 1x or just x. So I've collected my variables to one side. Now what do I need to do? Add 12. Now I've got to collect the constants to the other side. So add 12 to both sides. What is x equal? 26. Does it tell me to check my solution? Nope, so I'm done. Questions on number one. We okay? Not too bad? Am I moving too fast? All right, y'all are real talkative today. Good. Y'all are answering all my questions. Number two. Negative 3 fourths times 8n plus 12 equals 3 times n minus 3. What do I need to do on both sides? Distribute. Negative 3 fourths times 8n. Six. Negative 6n. Negative 6n. Negative 3 fourths times 12. Negative 3 fourths times 12. Nine. Negative 9. Very good. Distribute on the right hand side as well. 3 times n. 3 in. 3 in. 3 times negative 3. Negative 9. Negative 9. Do I need to slow down? Yes. Okay, I'm slowing down. Are there any questions about what I've done so far? Everyone knows how to distribute. If there's a plus sign between 3 and the set of parentheses, do I distribute? Yeah. No, because 3 is not being multiplied by the set of parentheses. Okay, I've simplified both sides. Now I need to do what? Plus 3. Not plus 3. Minus three. Subtract 3 in from both sides. Because it's a positive 3, so I need to subtract 3 in to get rid of it over there. Negative 6 in minus 3 in. Negative 9 in minus 9 equals negative 9. That's a lot of negative 9. Collected my variables to one side. Now I need to collect what on the other side? Constance. My constants. What is a constant? Well, not, 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 not. A number without a variable. Constant's just a number without a variable. Okay? That's what I mean when I say constant. I should have probably clarified that beforehand. I apologize. But now we all know what a constant is, right? So now I need to collect my constants to the other side. How do I do that? Add 9 to both sides. So I get negative 9 in equals, what's negative 9 plus 9? Zero. Zero. And now how do I get in by itself? Divide by negative 9 on both sides. What's zero divided by not negative nine? Zero. zero. Uh-oh. Is that okay to have zero as an answer? 
No? It's okay. Is zero a number? Yeah. I can have zero as an answer. That's a trick question. You can have zero as an answer. So zero is my answer in this case. Questions on number two? Can I move on? Okay. Sometimes we have special solutions when we're solving linear equations. We don't always have just one solution. Does everyone agree that we've had one solution on every equation we've solved so far? Just some variable equals that one number, right? That was my one solution. An equation that is true for all values of the variable is what we call an identity. And it has infinitely many solutions. It means whatever number I plug in there, it's going to make that equation true. So it's got an infinite number of solutions since there's infinite numbers. An equation that is not true for any value of the variable has no solution. That means I can't, no matter what number I pick, it's not going to work out for my equation. No number will ever work for that equation, ever. Are there any questions about that? So keep in, in mind the word identity, okay? Can I move on to our examples over our identities? So, we're still solving each equation. We're still following the same exact steps that we've been following. We have 3 times 5x plus 2 equals 15x. Question? Very, very quickly. Three times five x plus two equals fifteen x. What's my first step here? I'm following the same steps I've been following. Distribute. Distribute. Three times five x. Fifteen x. Three times two. Six equals fifteen x. So I've simplified both sides, correct? Huh? Isn't that called something? Oh, yes. Okay. Hmm? So let's just keep following our steps and see what happens. So I've simplified both sides. What's my next step after I simplify? Well, do I have any like terms to combine on each side of the equation? No. no. The Collect the variables to one side. How do I do that in this case? Subtract 15x from both sides. From both sides. What happens when I do that? Cancels Cancel them both out. What am I left with on the left-hand side? Six. Six. What am I left with on the right? Zero. Zero. When my variables cancel each other completely out on both sides, the variables just go away, I have to look at the statement that's left after that happens. So the statement here is 6 equals 0. I've got to see if it's true or false. Is this true or false? False. false. 6 does not equal 0, does it? So what would, what would y'all say on this one? No solution. no solution. So you can write out no solution or... You can use our symbol, which is a circle with a slash through it. If your variables cancel each other completely out on both sides, you're left with a false statement. It's no solution. Like I said, no matter what number I pick to try to make this equation work, to plug in, it's not going to work. You can sit there and pick numbers all day long. Plug in. No number will make this equation true ever. That's what no solution means. Does that make sense? Okay, letter B. What's my first step on letter B? Distribute negative 2 times 4y. Negative 8y. Negative 2 times 1. 
Negative 2 times 1? Negative 2. Negative 2. So I've simplified both sides. Now I need to collect the variables to the same side. So how do I do that in this case? Add 8y to both sides. What happens when I do that? Cancels out on both sides. What's left on the left? Negative 2. What's left on the right? Negative 2. Is that a true or false statement? True. What do you think my answer is? Infinitely many solutions. If your variables cancel each other completely out on both sides and you're left with a true statement, we have infinitely many solutions. No matter what number I pick to plug in here, it's going to make it work. If I plug in 0, it's going to work. 1 is going to work. 2 is going to work. 3, so on and so forth. There's an infinite amount of numbers, so I have infinitely many solutions. Please do not abbreviate it as IMS. Please do not do that. Please do not draw the infinity symbol because your answer is not infinity. You have infinitely many solutions. Do not put the infinity symbol and then put solutions behind it. Infinity solutions. Don't say that. Go ahead and write these three words out. Infinitely many solutions. Okay? Any questions on that? This is our identity right here, letter B. One of our identities. It means all values of the variable will work. So now we've looked at having one solution, we've looked at having no solutions, and we've looked at having infinitely many solutions. This is also why we, can't, or we move our variables first instead of our constants. We want to see if our variables will cancel each other out. That way I can look at the statement that's left behind. Does that make sense? A lot of people will try to move the constant first, move the variables first, just in case they cancel each other out. Okay? Any questions? Last slide here. These are just our a summary of what we've been doing the past few days with solving equations. So you may want to have these steps down so you can follow them for each problem that you do. You're not going to use every single step every single time. But you could use them all in one equation. Step one, use the distributive property to remove any grouping symbols. So distribute if you're able to. Step two, you want to simplify the expression on each side of the equation. Once again, that's if you're able to. So combine like terms if you are able to do that. Step three, collect the variable terms on one side of the equation and the constant terms on the other side. Which one do I want to do first, variables or constants? I want to do my variable first just in case they cancel each other out. Get your constants on the opposite side of the equation. Step four, isolate the variable. That's where you're solving your equation for the variable. And step five, check your solution. Check your solution if it tells you to. Don't check it if it doesn't tell you to. You can always check it if, even if it doesn't tell you to, though. Any questions about any of these steps? Are we still writing? Or can I move on? Here's our assignment. Page 35, numbers 4 through 26 evens. This will be due Wednesday, September 1st on Canvas. It's almost September. So due Wednesday, September 1st on Canvas. Now I've been telling all my other classes this, and I'm going to tell you guys the same thing. At some point today or tomorrow, I'm going to be entering zeros into the gradebook. Some of y'all's eyes got real big just there. Yeah. Because what's the problem? Some of us haven't turned in any work, have we? Hmm, that's an issue. So, either today or tomorrow, if you have anything missing, I'm going to enter a zero in for it. If you have a bunch of stuff missing, what's that going to do to your grade? This is going to start falling really fast for a really long time. Okay, until you get all that stuff turned in. 
there any questions about my notes before I end my recording? Make sure you get this written down. Make sure you get the correct heading on the paper. Do you have a question about the notes? Uh, what, is it, what is today? Today is August 30th. Any other questions?